Hi darlings, thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I have a stamping, piecing, and also kind of a stamping tips video for you guys. This is something that you guys have asked about on my channel time and time again. Some of you are new to stamping, some of you are veterans, but you guys want to kind of perfect your stamping. So I'm giving five easy tips for stampers, and these are not like um super you know crazy tips that are life changing but there are tips that have helped me stamp better i love stamping you guys see me use inks and stamps time and time again it's one of my favorite ways to craft bible journal or a memory keep so the first tip that i have for you guys is to make sure that you are securing the surface that you are stamping on um this is hard because sometimes we are stamping in our bibles when we are stamping in our bibles i I think the best option we have is to stamp with something under our Bible pages. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that I have used in order to help that. Um, the first thing that I can say is a Bible mat. Now I have purchased at the Dollar Tree, um, these, um, these are actually cutting mats and um, they're used for like veggies and whatever you use it's a kitchen item so it'll be in your kitchen um, accessories it comes at this size which is a big nice size this would be perfect if you're stamping like on a desk for example but um i have cut this down so you see this one right here this one is specifically for my two inch marble bible um margin bible sorry um it does have a little bit more extra space on the top and on the bottom but this the actual width of this fits perfectly into my two inch margin bible so what i did was it comes with two um cutting mats per um pack and it's only a dollar 25 at the dollar tree and what i did was i just cut it down to the size that would the width that would fit my bible mat and so this helps me have a little bit of a sturdier a harder um place to stamp down in when i'm standing um stamping in my Bible. And so it comes this big. So this would even be perfect for, for example, the illustrating Bible. You would just cut it a little bit further in. And again, two of these for um, $1.25 is such a great deal. I have seen Bible mats go up to $14, you know, $14.99 and things like that, $9.99. And um, this is just a cheap way that you can have and you can customize for your Bibles. Another thing that you can use is, this is a piece of chipboard that I have. And as you can see, the outline around here, I have used this before as well for stamping. And um, what I love about this is it's a, even a little bit harder. This is more flexible and I love this. But when I know I need a little bit more harder surface, I have used this chipboard before. So um, I will put this right under my Bible page and just stamp um, and it just does the work. So this is another option you can do if you don't have the plastic or if you want something sturdier. And then the last one that I'm going to show you is what I have right here. Now this is my glass media mat. Um, if you are not stamping in a Bible, this is so good for stamping. Um, it's a hard surface. You can have your ink over here. Um, as you can see, I have some of my leftover acrylic paint on here. And I don't mind because this is specifically for mixed media, but it provides a hard surface that I can stamp on. And if I'm over stamping like off of the page, I am not worried about it because my desk is, is clean. This is specifically for getting messy and I'm keeping my desk clean and I have a hard surface to stamp on. This is perfect when you are stamping, for example, on patterned paper. You can stamp right here. If you go a little bit over, it's fine. You can just wipe it right off of your glass media mat. And um, I just love this for so many things, but this is a good option as well. Okay, so I've given you that cheap option and a little bit pricier option. Now let me give you another tip. So another tip that I have for you is cleaning off your stamps. Cleaning off your stamps um, after you stamp is a good way to make sure that the next time you're using your stamp is not all dirty and give you a bad impression. Two ways that I clean my stamps are A, a stamp, uh, stamp chamois. This was actually... Um, my friend Pat, uh, Gail from Patio Ponderings, she actually recommended this to me. And so right now this is a little moist. So what I do is I keep one of these clear plastic tray. I got this at 
uh, Target in their dollar section. It's like, it comes four stacked together for a dollar. But I keep this a little moist and I keep this in my tray. And when I'm stamping, I can just grab this real quick and wipe it off, put it back. As you can see, it's super dirty, but I don't care because this is just for cleaning off my stamps and to keep them clean. This is um, a little bit, not pricey, but this is a uh, a version of or an option that would cost you a little bit more money but there's also the cheap versions I just grabbed whatever wipes were closer to me so I can show you guys in this video I usually use baby wipes though um, but wet wipes work just as great and they are a dollar at the Dollar Tree if you're gonna pick them up um, I had these around I use baby wipes all the time you guys probably see me in my videos using these this is another option that's cheap um, I love this because Honestly, if you buy this, it's reusable. And um, I've had this, I think, for three years now, and it still works great. So um, it, you know, pays for itself over the course of the years. And then once it gets really, really dirty, you can replace it. These you have to replace all the time, but it is a cheaper and faster option. So there's that. So cleaning off your stamps is my second tip. My third tip is to make sure you're using the correct stamp block. I have a various amount of stamp blocks and um, the latest ones that I picked up was a big set from um, Craft Bee and I'm going to link those below. Below, You probably have seen my um, unboxing for that video. I have small ones for my small alphas or smaller pieces. I have medium sized ones. Um, for This is great for like those uh, florals that kind of would fit on here. I have, this is my very first one, um, which is the usual size, that three by four rectangle. I also have a really long one. Um, I couldn't find it in my craft space, <laughs> but I have a really long one as well that works for lining up all of your letters. And I got that one from scrapbook.com. But having a perfect size acrylic block where you can stamp it helps so much better because you have a small piece that's about this size that's in the middle or on the side it can make it a little rocky when you go ahead and do your impression but the smaller the block the more you are in control of exactly where it's going to land so that is my third tip for you to have the correct size acrylic block for the stamp that you are stamping okay so I'm gonna put these away and then those are my three um, favorite tips. My other tip is not much more of a tip, but it's something that is optional. And I say optional because you really don't 100% need this, but it's something that I feel like if you are a person that loves stamping and um, you really want to improve your stamping and continue to do so, then it's something that is worth in investing in. I say that my last tip that is an optional bonus tip is to invest in a stamp positioning tool. There are many stamp positioning tools out there. One of the most popular ones is the Misty. And the Misty is a little bit out of my price range, but I have friends and a creative team um, members as well that are team members with me, I mean, that have the Misty and their stamping is amazing like it's always great they can double stamp um they don't have that worry and that always that works more outside of your bible because you're stamping either on let's say watercolor paper or pattern paper or just white cardstock and so you're able to double stamp then you can cut that out and add it to your bible pages or your projects and um it's just a really neat tool and it's really great for you to invest in. Now, I have purchased, or I have been sent, I should say, um, from Craft Bee, this smaller positioning tool. And you guys, I'm going to list the unboxing. This has a grid on the side. It's deep here in the middle. It has these acrylic um, inserts that I can put into here and then add, um, add in my paper and then stamp and double stamp. This is just a cheaper, smaller option. And I have been loving using this and I'm gonna be using this today. Um, just a small demo where I'm using um, some of the stamps from this month's By the Well for God um, kit that I knew I wanted to use in co in together, <laughs> together with some of the pattern paper. So I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna put you on fast forward and let's dig in. 
Okay, darling, so I'm gonna shift through these papers. This is the pattern paper from By the Well for God that was an add-on. And I am pulling the galvanized steel um, pattern paper and also the wood grain pattern paper. Um, I love that they included this because these are perfect to stamp out um, some of the images from the stamp sets to the actual paper. Um, so I'm gonna pull some washi that I knew I didn't really care about hoarding. Um, and I'm gonna use this washi to keep um, these pieces of paper to the actual um, stamp positioning tool. So I'm gonna keep those down. And now I'm gonna grab the pieces. I have the wood grain paper here in my stamp positioning tool. And I'm gonna grab some of that washi tape as you see here, and I'm just adding that to the sides to keep that down um, after I stamp it. And then I pick up those pieces and I'm gonna add just one more um, piece of washi just on that side because that side wasn't secure. And then um, we are good to go. So I go ahead and bring the ink over to the stamp. This is something that helps a lot. And then I'm going to really hold that down. Now the first impression was really, really good. Like I didn't even have to go twice, but I did just in case. And I love the impression. I love that you're able to go back onto it twice and you don't really have to think about am I right over and is it lined up? It's already lined up for you and that's a great thing about the stamp positioning tool. So I go ahead and do that again. So now I have two of those wood plank arrows and also that wood um, sign. So there is a look at that. So now that I have these, now I want to make some of the pieces for the galvanized tins. Um, so I'm gonna put that galvanized steel pattern paper. I'm going to use the same pieces of washi and adhere that to the sides. And now grabbing my, um, grabbing my stamp chamois, I clean off these um, pieces that I had already used. I put them back. This is also, great because it's easy cleanup and then i'm gonna grab those pieces i knew i wanted um, in that galvanized steel pattern paper another thing i really love about the stamp positioning tool is that you can get um two three four stamps you can fill it up and you can stamp them all at the same time so that also saves some time so here i'm grabbing three different pieces and just lining them up um, and then I'm going to push that down to pick those up. And this is another and my fifth tip. I know I said my last tip in tip number four, but this is my fifth tip, which is my last tip. You need to prep your stamp. So you can use um, your hand. Um, you can also use the back of an eraser or the, sorry, the eraser part of a pencil as I um, showed you there. And this is gonna help you prep your stamp that way, when you stamp, your impressions are even better. Um, sometimes you guys see me on the channel rub the stamp against the back of my hand. That's just another way to prep your stamp. So prepping your stamp is tip number five. So here is a look at that, and I love how it turned out. I'm going to take the time to clean these off, and then these are perfect because in my next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm gonna be using these pieces that I stamped out to do some paper piecing and have some pieces ready for my other um, for my other projects, such as Bible journaling in my Bible and also using them for my gratitude project. So make sure you stay tuned to my next video. If you are new here, consider subscribing, hit the like button, and definitely hit that notification bell so you don't miss the video. God bless. Bye.